Jazzcast Pros. Welcome to Living the Front Seat Life Podcast. It is me, your mental health coach and advocate, Kelly Marie. I have a treat for you. This is like a two-part kind of situation. First thing, we are going to talk about the self-care wheel and the balance that we strike with self-care. Now, the plus is there's a handout, you guys. So grab a piece of paper right now. But after you listen to the podcast, or if you promise to come back, head over to frontseatlife.com and download your free self-care wheel. You're going to need this to do the exercises, but I'm going to walk you through everything first. So you need to to hear everything I'm going to tell you, and then you can fill out the wheel for yourself. We often talk about self-care and the need for balance and finding time for self, but I don't think I've ever really gone deep and just talked about the different parts of you that need self-care. So I'm going to do that today. Now, let me give you a quick snippet and then we're going to dive deep. There are six, yes, six areas of you that require self-care. Psychological, emotional, spiritual, personal, professional, and physical. So what we're going to do today is go through each area, talk about what that area means and ways in which you exercise self-care for that particular area of you. I want you to prepare yourselves, but listen, not a big deal. Easy breezy. Take a deep breath. Inhale, exhale. It's all good because it's all about balance. It's all about finding and striking the right balance. Welcome to Living the Front Seat Life. I'm your host, Kelly Marie, and I invite you to take this journey with me. We're going to be talking about all things mental health and emotional well-being. You see, I am a overcomer. If you are interested in figuring out the path for you to determine how and where you will drive your future, this is the place to be. We get to determine the ride. We may not get to determine the weather or who's on the road with us or if it's going to be a scenic route or not, but we are the drivers. So join me on this ride, living the front seat life. Recording from Buffalo, New York, we are a little chilly right now in the middle of winter, but it is always a pleasure and honor to be here with you today. So thank you so much for listening. Please like, subscribe, and share. I would love for our podcast to reach as many ears as possible. We're talking about good stuff here. Mental health, the way that we can be healthier, how we can be healthier, and today is no exception. We are multifaceted individuals, right? We're we're, we're not just one-sided. You know, I, for example, am a mom. I work a nine to five job. I'm an entrepreneur. I have my podcast, right? I I have my mental health workshops. I'm a daughter. I'm a sister. I'm a friend. I'm a cousin. I'm an auntie. I have a lot of hats that I wear. I'm also a minister. Um, What else is there? I sit on boards and am civically engaged and involved in my community. There's so many pieces of me. And so when I talk about self-care, I really am talking about addressing all of the pieces of you, psychological, emotional, spiritual, personal, professional, and physical. These are the six areas that require your attention. So when you see the wheel, it's a wheel, it's a big circle, and it's broken up into six sections, one for each of the items that I've mentioned, one one for each of the areas, right? And what you're going to do is rate how well you take care of yourself in that area. You are going to rate how well you take care of yourself in that area. And that will give you an idea of where you need to focus next. Maybe you can't focus on all of the places of you, all the pieces of you at one time. Maybe you need to only focus on one at a time because that's what you have time for. But I I believe it's important to know that you actually have these different ways, these different pieces of you so that you can better gauge what what self-care is needed. 
right? For example, if your physical needs are met, then you may not need to exercise self-care in that area. Maybe you need to exercise self-care in your emotional area. So this should not be stressful for you at all. This should be something that um, is really welcoming, right? And if you are stressed out right now, this may not be a good time to start looking at the different areas of yourself to figure out where you need to focus on first. Maybe it's time to take a few minutes and do some deep breathing. We've practiced deep breathing before, and you know what that's like, the pyramid breathing, right? Or square breathing. You would inhale for four counts, hold for four counts, exhale for four counts, and pause or hold for four counts and start that cycle all over again. Do that for a couple minutes and that will decrease your stress. It will help regulate your breathing. It will lower your blood pressure, right? And so you have to start where you are. So maybe you're there today. Maybe today for you was stressful and you just came for a good word. Well, I'm going to give you a good word and you can do the work later. Or maybe you are ready to dive deep in Get ready to head over to the website to get your free download. Hey, wherever you are, I'm here to meet you there. Now, let's dive in. So the first area we're going to talk about is psychological. Psychological self-care. What? Yes, we're going to go there. So psychological, psychology, the mind. Granted, the mind takes care of everything. If your mind is not right, we talk about this, right? The mind's not right, what else can be? So the psychological part of you, the thought processes and how you think, why you think the way you think, the way you process your life, traumas and things like that, um, the good stuff, you know, how you process good times. All of those pieces of brain processing falls into that psychological bucket. So when you get your wheel, you'll see that there's a space for psychological self-care. And psychological self-care is going to be some of the things that you hear about already. Self-reflection, therapy, journaling, doing self-awareness activities or focusing on self-awareness, aromatherapy, doing things like drawing, painting, gardening, reading and practicing, self-care, self-help books, those all fall under that psychological self-care. I would even say going to like support groups that would fall under psychological self-care. The example that I have given you a couple of times about positive self-talk and saying something good about yourself every time you walk through the door or walk through an archway, that is an example of psychological self-care. So that is the first area, psychological self-care. And when you need to work on that area, those are some of the things that you can kind of focus on. So if you are looking for emotional self-care tips or, or ways to practice emotional self-care, the things I just mentioned may not work, right? Because those are, are primarily for a psychological self-care bucket or slice of your wheel. So now let's go to emotional. Now, emotional self-care is going to look like Self-love, you know, practicing self-love, practicing self-compassion, feeling your emotions. How many times have we talked about feeling the emotions? It's not a good or bad thing. It's about feeling what you feel, right? Telling yourself that you love you. Do you look in the mirror and tell you that you love you? Now, I actually don't look in the mirror and tell myself that I love me, but that might work for you. For me, affirmations work that positive self-talk. So that is something that falls under psychological and emotional. That positive self-talk, affirmations, those are things that will help with your emotional and psychological self-care areas. So you have self-love and practicing self-love, self-compassion, empathy for you. Doing things like watching a funny movie, right? Things that promote positive emotions, those feel good emotions, not in the sense of false positivity. Like don't pretend like everything's okay. If you need to cry, cry. That too is a form of emotional self-care. So it, it's not that it has to be one side of the scale or the other. It's about striking that balance. Again, feeling the emotion, whatever that emotion is. Feeling it, if it's not a positive feeling, feel it and let it go, right? You might need to feel the emotion and then look at the psychological piece and figure out why you're in that place. 
So while we are talking about separate buckets, they all fit together within the wheel. So we're talking about separate slices of the wheel, of the, the self-care pie, right? But how they all work together to create one you. So we've talked about psychological self-care and emotional self-care. The next one is going to be spiritual self-care. So spiritual self-care, again, this is regardless of religion. I didn't say religion, right? I said spiritual. And we all have a spiritual side to ourselves. That part of you will thrive and do better with self-reflection, connecting with nature. I love to garden. I love hiking. You know that I will get outside and get in some dirt real quick because that is my connection to the earth. That is my connection to everything um, spiritual, all things spiritual. I don't know why it is. It just is what it is. That oneness that you feel when you're connected to the earth. So being in touch or in tune with nature, going out for a walk, no matter the weather. So yes, if you are in a chilly region like I am, you can still go out for a walk in the winter. Be safe, be warm, dress appropriately, right? But it is okay to go out and enjoy nature. Meditation. We've talked about meditation. We've talked about mindfulness. Those fall under the spiritual slice of the pie, not in a way that takes you away from your practices, whatever your practices may be, but that they fall in line with them. Also singing, dancing, playing, that, believe it or not, is all a part of spiritual self-care. So when you're feeling low and, and feeling, you know, like spiritual disconnect or that you need to reconnect, these are some ways that you can do that. Girl, where have you been? I haven't seen you at work in a while. Girl, I quit and started my own business. Really? That's amazing. How did you do it? Well, I've been listening to this Beauty Boss Millionaire podcast, and it really helped me change my mindset from an employee to a CEO. All that from a podcast? Yes, the Beauty Boss Millionaire walks you through the process of starting a business and making your first million. I need that in my life. I need someone to help me. Just go to beautybossmillionaire.com or pull it up on your favorite podcast app. It's time to boss up jazz cast pros so that's the first three we've got psychological emotional spiritual next i'm going to talk about personal now this is personal to who you are who you are as an individual so one of the things you know we hear a lot about purpose and finding your destiny and living in your purpose and that is something that a lot of people strive to do and you may struggle with trying to figure all of those things out but that is a part of the personal self-care journey. So really discovering who you are, what your likes and dislikes are, figuring out what you want in life, planning um, like short and, and long-term goals. These are personal self-care tools. One of the things that I love that falls under personal self-care tools is vision boarding. I love a good vision board. Let me tell you, we just got together a group of women at my church. And we did vision boarding and it wasn't related to faith. It wasn't related to anything except for feeding the personal person, the individual, that personal side of you. And we created, instead of just a vision board, we created vision books. So I was able to create a book of my vision. It was time for me to do it because I haven't created a book in a while. And it was so relaxing when I was able to flip through the pages. You know what I'm going to do for you? I'm going to take a video, put it up to Instagram and to Facebook so you can see a video of my vision book. I will do that for you so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. But that feeds the personal piece of you. Vision boarding, I absolutely love it. And when you see my um, book that I post up for you, that should give you some ideas. You don't have to do a book. You can take a piece of paper or a piece of poster board it doesn't have to be anything formal. You can sketch out a vision board, especially if you like to draw, like go for it, like get creative and make it happen. However you vision board is how you do it. There's no right or wrong way. And when people say, yeah, that's like just clipping out stuff and doodling and drawing, it sure is. But what you're doing is you're feeding into the personal you. You're visualizing where you want to be. You're visualizing where you want to go, what you want to do, and who you are, that future you. So I encourage you to, if you have not, and uh, or even have not done it in a while, to consider vision boarding for that personal self-care 
slice of the pie. Now, our fifth piece of the pie, physical. If you have the handout, you're going to see that I skipped over professional and that's okay because I'm going to come back around to professional. I want to talk about physical self-care first. Physical self-care really is like your necessities, safe housing, taking care of you medically. So going to the doctors, eating healthy, exercising, getting enough sleep. How many times have we talked about sleep? Taking vacations. This is where bubble baths come in. You know, people talk about, you know, yeah, I I finally took time for some self-care and I took a bubble bath. It's a form of self-care. When we're looking at the whole self-care pie, we see that those things fall in one slice of the pie, that physical piece. So keep that in mind when you are um, looking at your pie and figuring out and ranking how you're doing with your self-care in those areas, what that physical piece actually means. So again, we're looking at safe housing, going to the doctors, taking medication, eating healthy, getting those massages. If you're into acupuncture, I don't know if you've tried that before. Float therapy. I've done float therapy and float therapy falls into both physical. It could also fall into personal and spiritual. So some of the things that you do for self-care will fall into more is will fall into more than one bucket and that's okay. That's totally cool and actually kind of like killing a couple birds at one stone. So I encourage you to find the ways in which you best exercise self-care and to also try something new because you don't know how that's going to resonate with. And lastly, our last slice of the pie, professional. Now I save professional for last because it's often overlooked. This is one of the areas that, especially in our westernized culture of go, 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 work harder. You have to have a side hustle. You have to be twice as good as the next person. You know, it is dangerous. It it can be dangerous to not take care of this professional piece of you. So your professional self-care is going to look like this is going to trip you out, taking a lunch. How many times have you worked through your lunch? I'm guilty of it. I have a new job and I've done it already. As much as I stay on top of taking my lunch and taking time out for myself, I still do it and I catch myself and you know, it is what it is. I just, I take it from the place that I catch myself and move forward. I don't beat myself up for it. I I just, try and do better next time. So taking time for lunch is huge. I would add, add, that's first on the list. And like the first thing I think everyone should really focus on. Take your lunch. Not only is it legally required, but you need to take time to eat. It's also time to practice mindfulness if you like, a time for meditation. You can use your lunch to focus on other areas of the self-care wheel. Take your lunch, please. Yes, thank you. Mm Mm-hmm. Setting boundaries, saying no, knowing what your job is, knowing what your job isn't, not working overtime. I know that a lot of folks, especially if they're salaried, will, you know, stay over extra. You're not getting paid to do that. You're there to work your 40 hours, work your 40 hours and go home, y'all. Do the job you're getting paid to do. And that's it, right? That goes back to setting boundaries. It's easy to give more. It's easy to want to do more. And we're taught that that is how we're supposed to function in this this rat race, this nine to five thing. But here's the thing. Our jobs are just that. They are a means to an end. They help us pay our bills. They help us secure our housing. They help us feed ourselves and our family. Jobs are not supposed to be our lives. They're a piece of our life. They're a part of the pie. And I'm really excited to announce that our next podcast, I have a guest and she is absolutely amazing. I cannot wait for you. Can you hear the smile in my voice? I cannot wait for you to meet her. Gabby Ionello is the corporate quitter. She is going to come and talk about how she quit her nine to five, why she quit her nine to five, and what employers need to do in order to keep their employees. One of those things is like encouraging your employees to take their lunch, go for a walk during lunch, right? Supporting your employees to set those boundaries. So even if you may be having difficulty setting boundaries, having a manager, supervisor, boss that is uh, supporting you 
to set boundaries, supporting you in taking your lunch, supporting you in your professional goals is huge. So Gabby Ionella will be joining us. The corporate quitter cannot wait. And I want you to be sure to catch next week's podcast um, because she's going to be dropping some gems. So I want to do a quick review of the six areas of self-care. First is psychological, and that's going to be things like self-reflection, therapy, group therapy, uh, journaling, emotional. Those are your self-love, self-compassion, empathy type of self-care, feeling and expressing your emotions, laughing, crying, spiritual. That is, you know, going for walks, doing things like singing and dancing, really connecting with nature. It's a great way to connect with your spiritual side. Also, volunteering, giving is another way too. The next one is personal. Those are the purpose-driven types of self-care techniques and practices. And then we have physical. Physical is really your basics, right? Safe housing, getting to the doctor, eating healthy, all that stuff. And then finally, professional. Professional is setting those boundaries at work, setting those boundaries within the work that you do. If you, you know, are entrepreneurial, you know, setting boundaries on who your client will be, who your client won't be, what work will you do, what work won't you do. Those are the six areas of self-care. I know I took a little extra time today, so just bear with me. I hope you got it all. And don't forget, head over to the Front Seat Life website to get your self-care wheel so you can fill it out for yourself to see where you need to focus more on which area, which slice of the pie. So until the next time, I encourage you to be the light. And if you're in need, if you are in crisis, if you need someone to talk to, please call the Suicide Prevention Helpline at 1-800-273-8255. Asking for help is acceptable Asking for help is okay. It does not make you weak. Please call if you need someone to talk to. If you need resources, dial 211 on your phone or go to 211 in your web browser to get information on different types of um, services that you may be looking for. But again, the phone number to the National Suicide Prevention Helpline is 1-800-273-8255. You are never alone. Until the next time, I encourage you to be the light. It is me, your mental health coach and advocate, Kelly Marie, and I see you. Welcome to Igniting Hope Radio, where we realize the differences between equity and equality. Here at the Buffalo Center for Health Equity, quite frankly, we don't want equality. We want equity. Well, why is that? When when you look at a Black woman, Black women are twice more likely to die from pregnancy or childbirth-related causes. Here in Buffalo, New York, 12 years of life is lost by each person living in specific areas of Buffalo because of their race. Zero percent of health should be determined by where a person lives. We hope that you will join us weekly for your daily dose of hope as we ignite the hope in the hearts and minds of those who share our five foundational pillars. We want equity, access to affordable health services of decent quality, social cultural awareness and consciousness. Pastor George will also be joined by national, local, and global leaders who are experts in the field of social determinants of health, such as education, unemployment and job security, food insecurity, housing, basic amenities, and the environment. The only way to change hearts and minds is through emotional engagement to get people behind it and continuously support the concept with facts. This is our aim and our mission weekly as you join Pastor George on Igniting Hope Radio.